Joining us with more on this is George Hamlin. He's the president of Hamlin Transportation Consulting. George, thank you for joining us this evening. You're welcome. So the Department of Justice took action against this merger, yet as Tracy just highlighted it recently, let go other combinations between major airlines like Delta and Northwest, and then the merger between United, Continental, and Southwest. So why put the brakes on this one, George? That, that's the question. This is marvelously inconsistent. After, after approving many and setting up two extremely large carriers, then not allowing American and U.S. Airways to get the same relief in effect, I mean, this, this virtually condemns them to sort of a second-class existence. So a questionable timing issue there. U.S. Airways and the parent company for American AMR Corp. said that they would fight the lawsuit in court rather than seek a compromise that could lead to some form of settlement. How likely is it that they would succeed fighting this? Well, that's, that's unknown. I mean, I think that they've got to make that statement, and it's certainly what they need to do. Now, at the end of the day, if justice offers some sort of modest compromise to, to let this go ahead, I think there could, it's possible there could be some negotiating. The Justice Department is suggesting that American go back to its original idea of reorganizing on a standalone basis. Is it actually able to do so on its own? Yes, I think so. But in the long run, when you're trying to compete with behemoths that are effectively almost twice your size, that's going to be a very difficult task. Yes, I think American can emerge, success, can emerge successfully from bankruptcy, but I, I don't think that's the best procedure going forward. Okay, so what would you think is the best procedure? Given how far this merger has gone and how the industry has shaped itself, I, I've not been a fan of consolidation, but it's, it's logically inconsistent not to go ahead with this. You've got other entities... Okay, including Southwest and low-cost carriers that are going to keep things fairly honest on the fare scene. But it just it does not make sense to, to stop this now. It doesn't make sense. The timing's strange. It is inconsistent. But what about the complaint that it would result in too much consolidation and that at the end of the day passengers would be affected because there'd be reduced competition. American doesn't charge for baggage. U.S. Airways does. The new company would potentially charge for those pesky badge claims. So who's really benefiting from this? Is it really to the benefit of the passenger? Well, why, if they were worried about lack of competition, why didn't they do something about this at the time of United Continental and, and Delta Northwest? I mean, Delta, Delta got effectively got rid of two whole hubs, Cincinnati and, and Memphis. Fares have, have gone up, capacity has come down. Now, part of that is recovery from the 2008-2009 recession. But, you know, what, what, is, what is different now? That is, this is not a new discovery. This has been going on for several years in, in the airline industry. And, again, you've got to be consistent. Do you, do you tell one party they can do something and then the other one can't? Well, so what would this mean for frequent flyers of American, for example? Well, if the merger doesn't go through, it means that the frequent flyers have less choice on American. The merger is going to open mm. up additional markets on a single carrier, just like United and Delta have the opportunity and have, have implemented now. And if this doesn't go through, it's going to make American, and for that matter, U.S. Airways, less attractive uh, from the standpoint of people who have a reason to choose a frequent flyer allegiance or program. Now, George, what's interesting is that the European Union actually gave it its approval in as far as it would affect flights in Europe. But again, the U.S. is against this. So how does one consolidate those two positions? Well, that's, that's backwards from what I think most of us expected. It, wouldn't ama it would not have amazed me to have seen some conditions required you know, by the EU. And it seemed like the, you know, the U.S. was not going to object to this, at least not to any significant uh, uh, degree. I might have expected to see some calls for some slot transfers or sales, but to actually outright reject it outright, just I didn't see that coming. And again, the EU basically said, fine, this, this can go ahead with you know, minimal trouble. George, at the end of the day, for me as a passenger, isn't this good news? Aren't I going to get cheaper fares and better service because Americans are going to have to try harder to fight for my business? American has the same cost structure as Delta and United. How, how are they going to do something much more different? How, how are they going to do something much different than that? That's, that's the problem with all of, the, all of the legacies. U.S. Airways is actually the one with the lower cost structure. 
yes america will have to fight harder but they're going to be fighting essentially with one hand tied behind their back to their ankle trying to run a race under those conditions Okay, well, we'll see how that race plays out. Still some distance to go with uh, them fighting that lawsuit. We're going to have to leave it there. George Hamlin, thank you so much. President of Hamlin Transportation Consulting.